Welcome to another episode of Sacred Pause, the podcast for self-healers. Today, my guest is a songwriter, a singer, a music producer, and a member of the Piano Guys. Um, they are a very popular musical group. They have over 2 billion views on YouTube and almost 7 million subscribers as well. So definitely go check them out. He is an amazing husband, an amazing father of three, and lucky for me, he just happens to be my uncle. So welcome to the show, Uncle Uncle Albertus, Al Vanderbeck. Thank you. Well, I'm the one Whew. who feels honored. Thank you. To have my niece, and there's no better compliment than to get a text from your niece and says, hey, I want to come and talk to you about your life. Like to me, that a, was a huge, just, it's an honor. I felt like, wow, because Kelsey's really cool. You're cool. You're, you're like what I define as like the hip in tune with what's going on in the world, right? Thank you. And so for you to ask this 48-year-old just kind of. Is that how old you are? Yeah. You kind of just are always in your 30s to me. <laughs> like you just play around in your 30s. Yeah, you I, look similar and you act similar. Well, I think there's a certain point in life where you're just like, you know, that's who I am. I don't know what you're supposed to act like or feel when you hit your 40s or 40, 50s. I think I'm just, I am what I am. Exactly, exactly. So thank you. Of course. It's going to be fun. I'm of excited. Of course. Me too, me too. This. Were you nervous at all for this? Uh, yeah, to be honest, I was. Me too. Yeah, I was a little bit nervous. Um, um, one, because, you know, I think anytime you have conversations with anyone, and especially family, that mm. you haven't really had a very intimate, you know, I mean, we're close, but I wouldn't say we've had intimate conversations, you know, very personal ones where you have to be vulnerable. Yeah. And so I think, um, yeah, I was just like, okay, what are we going to, that's why I was like, what do you want to talk about? Like, and then you're like, well, is there anything off limits? I'm like, well, as long as I can talk about this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. okay, well, that's great. And I'm like, okay, well, then after that, then it's just like, let's just sit down and start talking. Yes. I very much figured you would want to mention yeah. higher powers. So yeah. I'm all for it. Yeah. So we'll start with my first question. I just would love you to share your background and whatever you feel called to share and then your journey to where you are right now. Yeah. Well, I, just, I grew up in a family of seven, a very musical family where we were all expected to learn instruments at a certain age. We all sang together, you know, so music was just, I, I didn't even really appreciate it for what it was. Mm. I do now, but back then it was just, it, it was actually kind of a punishment. It was just like, you got to go practice, you know, like I'd rather be out hanging out with my friends. And it's like, you know, my instrument was the violin. You know, we had clarinet, we had trumpets, we had piano and then singing and guitar, harmonicas. My dad played the accordion, so everyone was very musical. And I remember the day that, it was my turn to go pick my instrument. And I already had in my mind what I wanted to play, mm -hmm. and I wanted to play the saxophone. So we go to the music store. I'm 11 years old, and as soon as we walk in, it's just instruments everywhere. And I'm just like, okay, where's the brass section? And I started going towards the brass section, and my dad said, where are you going, son? I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to go get the saxophone. He's like, no, son, we're getting you a violin. And I'm like, What? <laughs> the violin, like only girls play the violin, yeah. you know, it was just, you know, I'm a little kid, I didn't, I, get I wasn't it, I get trying it. to be, you know, one of those, yeah, male yeah. chauvinist, but I thought, that's a girl's instrument, and that's not cool, the saxophone yeah. is cool, yeah. it sounds cool, it looks cool, is that that big, that yeah. big, you know, it's curved like yeah, this, yeah, you know, yeah, Kenny, yeah. you know, Kenny, Kenny G, yes, yes, thank you for the image, do you know how to play that song? No. I don't know how to play the saxophone because... Oh, you never got to it? No, so guess what my dad did? Continue. He put his hand on my shoulder, and he gave me the guilt trip of all guilt trips. said, son, it would make your dad very proud if you played the violin. And I'm pretty sure that that is an instrument that will be played in heaven. Oh, my gosh. Right? You had no choice <laughs> after that. So we came home with the violin that day, and I hated it. I hated it. And I hated practicing because it was always like, go to your room and practice. Mm -hmm. It was a, That's a punishment, like go to your room and practice. But of course now, um, you know, now three kids of my own and I'm kind of taking a little different approach. I'm kind of letting, um, you know, I guess them have a little bit more freedom of what they wanted to choose. That's very nice of you. Um, it is. You know, being in the music business, it's just kind of like, okay, let's just have instruments all over. You know, I've always had a studio in the house. So guitars, percussions, whatever, violins and pianos. And I just kind of just watch them. And kids, they're curious, and they'll just kind of gravitate towards mm -hmm. it. And so, you know, each of them kind of, Holland, my oldest, he 
kind of chose the piano. Avea was guitar and singing. And, and Anton, believe it or not, he chose the violin. <laughs> Is that crazy? Full circle yeah. right there. So that's kind of been, that was kind of how we were brought up, <clears throat> uh, just music. And so now, now looking back on that, I'm just, of course, I'm just grateful, right? That music, even if it was forced on me, you know, it made me be, um, I mean, I think it built my personality. It, what gave me a great passion and desire of what I do today. And, and playing the violin really opened my world to classical music, which is a big thing that we do as, as the piano guys, yeah. taking pop music and mashing it up with classical music. So... <clears throat> I'm really grateful for that, and that's kind of what I'm doing, trying to do now. Me and my wife, Rachel, with uh, music and, and anything else in life. is I have found the key is in anything in life. If it's uh, sports, if it's religion, if it's music, is instead of forcing it and forcing it, and that's what we tend to do as parents, but instead I try to be, we try to be passionate about it in front of our kids and hope they pick up on it. So with music, I just try to just be, show them how fun it is. Mm -hmm. Show them how fun it is, you know, as far as um, our religion. Like when we live it, we share stories, we, we say things that touch us, we share it with our kids, but we're just excited about it and it's genuine. We just hope our kids see that and feel it and be like one day, and it probably won't happen, you know, now, but later on in life, we'll be like, wow, my parents were really super into that. Maybe there's something to it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something that we should do, you know, and so... Then it's kind of like their idea. It's like on their terms. It's, it's when they're ready for it instead of like, do this because we know best and you're just going to be grateful for it one day. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be like, I told you so. You know. What do you think you'd be doing if your parents didn't, my grandparents, force music on you? You think you'd be doing what you're doing right now? Hmm. Yeah, I think I would, would be just because <clears throat> as much as I resisted it, there was things I was doing on the side uh, with music that wasn't, it was on the production side. Like, I remember they got a boom box for Christmas and it had two tape cassettes and I figured out a way you could plug in a microphone, record on one side a little part, like let's just say like I did a beat, right? Then I would put that part and play it and then put a tape on the other side and record what I just played and add something on top of it. So I had this and I'd add like a tuka, 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 tuka. and I'd keep doing that about eight or nine times. I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but all I knew was like, wow, this is like 10 of me. And I would show it to friends. They're like, what is that? I'm like, who are all those voices? I'm like, oh, it was just me. They're like, that is so cool, bro. <laughs> so I didn't know, but I was just getting into like songwriting and production and arrangement. What age was this? Like in middle school. Yeah. Around the same time, like the violin. Mm. So that was kind of like, I knew music was cool. I didn't think violin was cool, but I was just like experimenting with all these like, little keyboards and the sounds and, and I always had melodies in my head, always had songs. So yeah, I think I'd be doing music. Did I know that it was going to be something? I knew, well, let's just say this. I always believed that music was going to be a part of my life. Did I always believe that I had the potential to do it as a living? No. It took me a lot of time to, to really believe that. Do you feel like when you <clears throat> finally believed it, that's kind of when the success showed up? Because you've been at this yeah. for as long as I right. can remember. The crazy thing, Kelsey, is when I let go of the idea of forcing it to happen is when it happened. Exactly. Yes, I love it. Because I just had in my mind, I was put on this earth to do music. I need to do music. Come on, God. You bless me with music. My whole life's to be music. No brainer. I'm going to do music. So I was forcing. I was trying to be a singer, songwriter, and doing my own thing. And the crazy thing is I wanted it for all of the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. I wanted music because of the fame. I wanted it because of money. I wanted it because of anything worldly. That the, that the media makes it just look so glamorous. And, you know, basically just all the temporal things. When I let go of that and I said, you know what? Have you seen the movie um, Soul yet? That little Pixar Disney movie? Oh, I think so. I think About so. the jazz musician? Oh, no. no okay. No, no. I totally need to see it because it's, it really resonated with me because I felt like um, I could totally relate. Because you have this jazz, I won't try to give away too much, but basically just has this jazz musician and he just feels like his whole life is about being 
music, doing mm -hmm, music, being mm -hmm. this musician. He's never had a break. He's just like, come on, this is it. And his mom, son, get a real job, you know? And then he gets this job as like a middle school band teacher and he's just kind of going through the motions. He's like, no, I'm supposed to be on stage anyway. Um, things happen and I can't give away because it's too much of the punchline for you. But anyway, he go his whole thing is he feels like his purpose was to be a musician. Mm -hmm. And I always felt my purpose, that's why I was put on earth is to be a musician. But no, I believe that music was not my purpose, but was a way to help me connect with other people, mm. to connect with my family. Whoa, I like that. To connect I like that. with God, to connect with my nephews who are into music. You know what I mean? So um, it was just a literal bridge or an, uh, an instrument in my hands of a way that I could bridge that gap in, in those relationships in the world. Yeah, but it's not who I am. I'm not music. I mean, you know, that's not my purpose. But that's what helped me to find a higher purpose. Yeah. So everyone's like searching for their purpose. And it seems like it's just to get closer to themselves and then to get closer to others. Yeah. Yeah, I've never thought about it like that. But I kind of always known that everybody's purpose is the same. It's to, you know, love yourself, love others. So simple, right? Yeah. So when was it when you first felt true love for yourself? I think I'm still... Still working that. at it? Yeah. I think because I think... I don't think in life there's really an arrival point of like, man, I made it. Like, yeah. I figured it all Even out. Even with you and all your success? No. Wow. It's, 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 it's almost like the more that I learn about myself and about life and about others and about love, the more that I realize, man, I have a, a lot to learn. I have so much more to learn. Yeah. Seriously, it's very, it's like really humbling. It's like you think you have these moments of like, yeah. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not trying to be down on myself, but I think it's a good because it's a motivator. It actually makes me feel like, man, I could be better. I'm, I'm so much better than I was five years ago, 10 years ago. Honestly, the Al Vanderbeek that I was 10, 15 years ago, I wouldn't want to hang out with myself. I mean, I still don't like hanging out with myself, but I have to. You know what I mean? But <laughs> what no, I'm just, you know what I'm kind saying? Kind of so, though. You know, I get, you know I get what you what look you back and you're just like, man, that dude was just, I was, you know, selfish. It was, it had such an ego. It was just, you know, but it was a, it was a time in my life where I was trying to figure things out, you know? So do I look back now and say, I'm better? Yeah, I, I think I'm better. Do I think I've arrived? No. I think I have so much more to learn. And I think this is what this lifetime is for, for me. It's a time of going through trials. It's a time of discovery. It's a time of learning what your purpose is. Yeah. I, even though I feel that I found my purpose is, as a father and a husband and, and as, as, an, as a music producer, I think that's just probably temporary. It's for now. A year from now, two years from now, I may have a different purpose. Mm -hmm. But you kind of know when you're there. And you just, again, I'm just enjoying the ride, but I just know that um, I have the expectation that there may be something different, a different calling, a different purpose as life progresses and evolves. And don't hold on to this. It's like, this was my only chance. Yeah. You, have you ever heard of the, the analogy of a, a, I like visualizing things. So it's like, there's this piece of pie. This used to be my mentality. There's this piece of pie and someone's cutting the pie. And then they start handing out pieces of the pie. And here was I watching someone get a slice of pie and saying, that was my piece of pie. That was supposed to be for me. Instead of being happy and celebrating that they were getting a piece of pie, I was like, no, that was my piece of pie. Now what? Now I just, just, I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to give up because that was for me. But I've learned in God's way, in his eyes, and in his plan, there are multiple pies, never ending in different flavors and varieties that he's just handing out. Yeah. So now when I see someone get a piece of pie, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm so, that just makes me so happy. Like when I see you doing your podcast and you getting that piece of pie, I'm like, and seeing that that brings you joy and yeah. seeing what, how that can affect others who listen to it, I'm like, that is so awesome. And so when, when you change, when, I don't know when it happened, when that perspective changed, but um, it did, and gradually, 
And I just kind of knew that, okay, I guess I'm kind of going in the right direction now because mm -hmm. now I can be happy for other success mm -hmm. and celebrate those moments instead of feeling like down and comparing myself. Why can't I have that? That was supposed to be for me. That was supposed to be my life, you know, so. Did you ever have a <clears throat> moment where you gave up on your dreams? I don't know if I ever really gave up. I think the only thing that, and it's not really giving up, is when I said I just kind of gave up the idea of like, you know, if music isn't going to be my thing, oh, I guess this is what we started talking about because, you know, I was forcing music. And I'm like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So then I just said, you know what? I'm always, music is going to be a part of my life. And if I don't support my family with that, that's fine. You've let that go. I let that go. Yeah, was right? that hard? It, it, I don't know if it was hard. It was probably hard, but now looking back, it was, it just felt right. Yeah. Because I put so much energy into it. And it was causing like just a lot of stress on myself. It's just like, why put so much pressure on myself that that's my only shot in life? Instead, I started focusing yeah. on my relationship so with my family, mm -hmm. my wife, my kids, and with God. And I was cool with my life. I was like, this is awesome. And I had a job from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., a night shift job, Oof. driving a forklift. And I was so content and mm. happy. I'd go home. I'd still do music. I'd enjoy it. But I was driving a forklift. But guess what? My relationship with my family and God was just like it was being built on a foundation that was I felt was very solid. And that's just when things just really started um, making sense in my life and started to really change. And fortunately, I was blessed with music shortly after, but it was funny, after I let oh. it go is when it happened. It came, yeah. When I stopped focusing on the money and having to do this and that and just doing music because it was fun and because I felt like it was a gift that I could always have. Would you say when you let go of yourself and focus more on others is when oh, yeah. everything kind of just blew yes. up for you? Yeah. The best way, I think, you know, you when you kind of go through rut, I go through ruts all the time. Yeah, same. Where I'm course. just like, I don't feel that motivated. And I kind of, maybe a little depressed, you know? Mm-hmm, yeah. And without fail, the best way to get out of it is to stop thinking about myself. Yeah. And there's a, a saying, when you lose yourself in the service of others is when you find yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I've kind of just lived by that. And I can, I can tell when I'm feeling that way. And I'm like, okay, I'm thinking too much about myself, my own problems. I'm getting overwhelmed by things I got to do with music or you know, how I can be better as a dad or a father, or as a friend, as a son, as whatever. And then I just, and almost you just don't do anything because you just feel like so overwhelmed. Yeah. But it's as soon as you just get out of that and start doing just little things, for others, a conversation, talking, you know, sending a text to someone or whatever. All of a sudden you just get out of your own Head. little world of yeah. this thing you that you're basically just making up all these things, you know. I don't know why we do that to ourselves. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and then you just start looking outside of yourself and then others, it always gets me out of that. Would you say you live more in your head or your heart? Uh, depends on who you ask. But if you're asking me, I think a little bit of both. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of both. Do you like bounce back and forth? Do you feel the difference between the two? Are you more in your heart with music or with your family? Wow. Was this a question you sent me beforehand? <laughs> no, good. I'm sorry. We're just, just letting it flow. Just flowing it. No, this is I haven't good. even looked down. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good question. I think um, with music... I mean, it's, it's a combination of both, but if I had to choose with my heart, and I would, I would yeah. like to say more with my family as well, but I am in my head a lot um, when it comes to uh, sharing things. For example, like if there's mm. something with work that I'm working on, like Rachel can tell when she's talking to me once I go home that I'm thinking about that. Page two. And that I'm not really paying attention I, but I kind of have a gift of like, I can hear key words of what she's saying, but I'm, it's bad because I should, <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing her, but I'm not truly listening. Yeah. I'm listening, I'm hearing key words so I can say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But in my head, even if I'm looking at her, she can tell you're not really listening or you're thinking about that you know she song knows. you're working on. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. So I'm, uh, right now I'm trying to figure out, see, this is another thing where like I'm trying to figure out how to come down 
after being stimulated all day with music, mm. how to now come down from that so I can go in and give my family the attention and that they deserve. Yeah, be present. And have that creativity. Because I put so much creativity and time and energy into this. A lot of times I just have none left over for my family. And that sucks. That is not good. That I, that they get the worst me sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the exhausted to tired. I've gotten so much better. But again, it's one of those things I could be, I have a lot of work. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a lot of, a lot of room to improve. So, but that's, that's a good thing. Again, it's not, I'm not coming down on myself. I'm just like, you know what? You can be better. You can be better. So I, I find ways to like meditate like for 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, my friend sent me, a, actually he's a music producer and he creates uh, yoga and meditation music. And he's here, try this. It's actually has, it's really cool because he uses frequencies that actually just really connect with certain things in your brain, um, sound waves and frequencies that hit certain things in your mind that help you to relax, nice. right? So I'll lay down and turn that on for 15 minutes, close my eyes. And all, it's all I need is 15 minutes, and then I can go inside and just, I'll be okay. Because, you know, work's going to be here tomorrow. Whatever I finished is still going to, you know, I can start it up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I can go inside and just kind of really be a little bit more available mentally. Yeah, send me that. That sounds awesome. It yeah. sounds like, a, have you ever been to a sound bath? No. Yeah, it's really cool. You lay down, it's usually with a group of people. And singing bowls, there's always like a facilitator, musician, I guess we can call them, um, activating these singing bowls. So you're literally getting a bath of sound. A bowl. Sound bath. Singing okay, bowls. Okay, yeah. Like I've, a Tibet I've, singing I've, bowl. I've, okay. You like do things, you right. hit them. You know, I'm not too familiar. Um, they have like the triangle, they got drums. So you're just fully stimulating, let go, letting go of all the energies that aren't serving you. Basically, yeah. so that's cool because it's, it's like thing, it's like a sound bath on demand. Right, you don't have to go anywhere. Right, and I think it's probably the same, you know, uh, same as far goal. as yeah. the frequencies. I'm sure in those bowls, they have certain frequencies that just resonate with your mind and your spirit and just activate them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you know we react. I did a test with my kids once playing different genres of music, just to, and they were younger. They're all little, just to see how they would react. And I said, I'm gonna. Play music and whatever your mind or your body tells you to do, do it. So I put on like this mosh, like totally screamo music. Oh boy. And they just started jumping around, knocking to each other. They didn't never seen a mosh pit, but that's what they that's wanted what, to do. That's what happened. They were <laughs> hitting each other. Wow. And then I put on um, some pop music and they just started dancing. They weren't hitting each other, so, but they were just like, yeah, yeah. yeah, look at me, you know, doing these moves. And then I put on classical music and they started like doing just very calm. They were ballet dancers or something, you know what I mean? And so That's the power of sound and frequencies and just music in general, I, don't, I think we, ver we underestimate. I think a lot of people just, you know, um, they don't realize how powerful uh, music and especially the frequencies that, and the rhythm and the intent behind music makes us feel. Mm -hmm. It can make us feel super hyped. It can make us feel super happy, super sad. Yeah. Um, super spiritual. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's something I really pay attention to. So when he sent me that, I was like, yes, it's cool. This would be really cool to, to try out. And it totally works. You know, totally, totally works. Love it. Yeah, I want to try that out. What do you attribute your success to? Because do you consider yourself a very successful person? Because you, in my eyes, you're the most successful in nah. my entire family, mom and dad side, to be honest. Yeah. And I have a big family. Yeah, we have a big family. We, yeah. Uh, you know, I look at success in a totally different way. Um, before, I would look at it, um, you know, in the world's way. Success, I guess I'm successful in that way. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Check. Right. But I think, hmm, no amount of success would ever compensate for any failure at home. Mmm, I like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. So, let's just say I had all this, you know, the same success, you know, billions of views, millions of records sold, whatever. But if I 
wasn't a good husband, wasn't a good father and provider and protector of my family, I would feel like I was a failure. So yeah. in those terms, again, I don't think I've arrived. I'm doing the best that I can. All my joy and success comes within my relationship with God and with my family. And I feel like if that comes first, work, making money, doing all this, it's easy. It yeah. is really easy. Yeah. Because one, I'm not motivated by money. That used to be my motivator. Like, oh, you put all this pressure on yourself. You got to do this. You got to do this. And that's why people are like posting all over Facebook. Oh, TGIF. Oh, Monday sucks. And looking forward to the weekend. And I feel really bad. Same. But I remember I used to be that guy. Yeah, same. Looking forward to the weekend. Get out of this job because they're not, they haven't found their purpose. They, and they have one. And we cut ourselves short. But we are put on this earth to be great. We weren't put on this earth to be mediocre. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And as we thrive, we shouldn't shrink because we feel like other people are like we're taking their piece of pie. I think we do that. Now, I, you know, I have certain friends that I feel like, you know, and they've said to me like, oh, well, you know, it's kind of hard for me to be happy with you because my life sucks and I look at yours. They honestly told you that? Yeah. They're just like, you know, well, I, you, nice you were doing share, what I wanted to be doing. You yeah. know, that's what we were doing. Yeah. together as kids, music. Yeah. And now here you are, and it's hard for me. And I'm glad they could be honest with me. Yeah, but that's a good step. So now should I shrink to make them feel comfortable? Definitely not. But no. have you? No. Okay, great, great. I mean, that thought goes through your mind. Yeah, yeah, like, but you no, don't act on it. I was put on this earth to shine, and so can you. I didn't take your piece of pie. Go find your piece of pie. There is a lot. And, and it's only you can find it. Mm -hmm. I can't give it to you. Because mm -hmm. if I gave you what I got, then I'm just giving you my leftovers or a piece. When you can have your own piece, you can have your whole entire pie. Yeah. Right? So, sorry, I go off on tangents a lot. No, that was great. That was great. So what advice would you give people who either know their passion and they're just striving to make money from it and make a living out of it? And people who just have no idea what they want to do with their lives and are just walking around with no purpose. I have so much compassion for both those people because yeah. I was right. deep in those two things for years. Um, and it's, it's so liberating once you finally find that thing. Yeah, isn't it? It is. It is. It is. It's beautiful. So what advice would you give to these people? Well, one thing that I do, I love to do right now, and I feel this is, again, a little bit of my purpose, is mentoring younger musicians that are aspiring. Mm. Yes. And before we do any music, we sit down and I say, okay, what is your goal with music? What is, what is your intent? What's your why? Yeah, what is your why? Yeah. And if they bring up, oh, it's because I want to be famous. I want to make money. I want lots of views. I say, don't do it. Go, that's... That's, don't chase that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but when they say, you know what? I think it's fun. I think it's something I'm good at. And I really enjoy it. And they don't bring up like a lot of those worldly reasons. I'm like, cool. Then I feel like they're on the right track yeah. of discovering who they are. But the thing is, I always feel like, like who am I to... Everyone has their own journey, right? <laughs> you know, everyone has their own journey. Yeah. And I can only share what I've been through. And fortunately, I feel like it relates a lot because I've been everywhere. I've been all over the map <laughs> with my life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, there's pretty much nothing that someone can say to me that they have done or thought or questioned or doubted that I probably haven't felt myself. So I feel like, I, I, man, I feel like my life has been so enriched and blessed because I, I feel like that I can look at someone very non-judgmentally and say, I get it. Yeah. I've been there. I've thought those things. And so everyone has, you, you got it. I mean, the only advice that I would say is, is, but then again, it's like if I say certain things, then maybe it takes away an opportunity for them to, to learn. Right. I just say, you know, this is what I, I, I when I was sitting there, 
and when music, when I felt like it was supposed to be for me and that was my purpose, <clears throat> I wish that someone that had perspective could have told me. But then I also wish, I, I, I'm also glad that I didn't because now I can say, oh, well, I lived through that and I figured it out. And because I figured it out kind of almost just on my own, I'm kind of better for it. Yeah, I get that. You know what I mean? Yes, totally. But let me reframe the question. Okay. What would you tell your younger self? Oh. And even more specific, think about a time, go in your head and think about a time or your heart where you were just in, like you were suffering, you were down. Mm. What would you tell that younger self of you now knowing what you know now to help them rise above faster maybe? Because obviously you have. That will help others, I think. Here's an analogy. Okay, let's go. I love an analogy. You know, when it, um, like when there's a big rainstorm, okay? Okay, got it. And there's thunder and wind and, and then after all that happens, there's a rainbow. And all we really appreciate is when that storm is over and we see the rainbow. Wow, we take pictures and people post it. Wow, look at this beautiful rainbow. No one really talked about the storm, about the wind that was needed and the moisture that was needed for the plants to grow, the wind that was needed to strengthen the branches and the trees and make those roots grow yeah. stronger so yeah, they didn't yeah, fall yeah. over. But instead we just focused on the rainbow. I think my life has been filled with rainbows and storms, and I've gotten to a point now where I appreciate the storm because I know there's a purpose behind it, nice. and I'm going to learn a lesson, and it's going to make me stronger. So instead of telling myself, oh, I can't wait till this storm is over, this trial, I'm like, you know what? There's a something that I need to learn that I haven't learned yet, mm -hmm. and I'm going to grow through this. And instead of waiting, looking for that rainbow, I just endure the storm the best that I can, knowing that it will eventually be over and I'll be stronger for the next one because there's going to be another one. Yeah. And that's life. It's full of tests and trials of just seeing how we endure them and seeing how, how our character has changed and, and the way that we deal with others amidst these trials and how we can be more loving and how we can just be better people. So I would just tell myself, and this is so cliche, but it would be like, you know what? There's going to be better days. It's okay. Keep walking. Keep swimming. Keep your head up. It's going to be okay. This is what this life's about. I love it. I like that. <sighs> um, I know you believe in God. Have you always believed in God? I think I've always believed in God. Have I always had a relationship with Him? No. You know, being brought up in a family that was very religious. And you're just kind of expected to go to church and do certain things. So I think you yeah. get to a point where you just kind of just, you know, you just do it. And I, and I served a mission for my church, went to Korea. And then I got home and I was started questioning. I'm like, wow, this religion thing, man. It's, do I really, really believe it? Or was I living off the light or testimony of my parents and yeah. church leaders? They, they call that, it's a term called leaning off borrowed light, where we lean off the understanding and light of others, but we haven't really found the light within ourselves. So we just kind of go with the flow. I was going with the flow. So there was a 15 period after I returned from my mission in Korea where I 15 was- 15 year period? 15 year period Dang, where- it's a long period. Where I was trying to figure it out. Yeah. Where I was like saying, you know, is this for me? And I, you ever been to a buffet, like chuck a here yet? Or, of uh, course. Gold? Okay. I treated, 
the gospel or the, the religion that I believe in, which is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a.k.a. Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to all the Mormons right. out there. Yes. I treated that like a, a buffet, okay? Okay. Another analogy. I love these. Right? I like analogies too. I really do. So I would always go to Chuckarama. It's the best buffet here in Utah. And I don't know if it's the best. But Golden Corral is probably a little better. Golden, uh, you agree? No, I will take it back. Chuck Ram is like the go-to because it's growing up family. But as far as variety and quality, Golden Crow is Okay, better. yeah, okay. <laughs> but anyway, I would go into, into Chuck Rama and guess what? Okay, here's foods of all varieties, of all kinds, and meats and veggies and desserts. But I would go in and limit myself to the chicken wings and scones. That's all I wanted. Okay. So that's how I treated religion. It's like, ah. Uh, well, I can do that. I want a little bit of that, but all that other stuff doesn't make sense. It's too hard. I don't, I don't, want, I don't get it. I don't want to do any of that. So I did what was convenient and easy that didn't make me uncomfortable. Gotcha. I didn't dive all, I didn't go all in. Okay? Gotcha. But when I realized, when, when I went into this buffet that we call religion and God, and I said, you know what? For once in my life, and I was probably 36, 37 at the time, I said, you know what? This time, when I go into that buffet, I'm going to try it all. I'm going to try <laughs> yeah. all the meats. I'm going to try all the vegetables, all the proteins, all the carbs, all the desserts. I'm going to do it all and see what happens, right? So we just went all in. Like my wife and I together and our family, we just said, Let's, we're going to do it all. And when we went all in, and started doing all those things that we were taught and heard to do when we were younger. But when we did it for ourselves and for our own way to just like see if it really worked for us. That's when all the fireworks went off in my mind and in my heart. And this fire started to burn of like, yeah. wow, this is incredible. Like, there is so much more that I was put on this earth to do. And God wants to literally just open up his arms of love and to say, boom, here, here, here. Like you could, he like, it was like surgery. It was like he gave me a whole new pair of eyes. Like I, the way that I looked at my wife, the way that I looked at others was just, because again, it was like the whole thing of like not looking within ourselves. It was just like, I looked at everyone as like, you're my brother. You're yes. my sister. We are connected in such an intimate and spiritual way that we can't even imagine, right? But I think my whole thing was just because when we went all into it and really just kind of put it to the test, let's see if this works, you know? Let's see if this really is going to make us, our life, more fulfilled mm -hmm. and our purpose a lot higher. And it did for us. So that's when things just changed, you know? And so, like, to me... You know, and when you texted me and you're just like, you know, anything off limits, I'm like, well, as long as me talking about God isn't off limits, which I knew you'd be okay with it. But, you know, the thing just is, just, sure. right? Yeah. Because there is nothing I can talk about in life without it all leading back yeah. to how I feel God has just blessed my life mm. with a perfect, unconditional love that it's hard to put in words, but I just feel it and I just know it's right. And he's never let me down. Never. Wow. Whew. Would you say you're more religious or spiritual? I don't like that label at all, you know? You don't like either? Is there a difference? Because I find myself, when, when the judgment comes, I find myself not judging the spiritual side, but judging the religion side for whatever my childhood reasons yeah. are. Maybe they're the same. Everything to me is the same at this point. Everything's connected. I agree. Yeah. Cool. I believe I'm deeply spiritual. Yeah. But I'm a very devout to my religion. Yeah. As well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel, again, I don't, do I feel it's my responsibility to go up to anyone or everyone and, and try to make them do what I'm doing and the only chance in life you're, no. 
but it's such an integral part of who I am. If you go read a book or go see a movie that you just love, what do you want to do? Share it. I feel the same way with my beliefs. It is just so natural to me to share things that I believe in. I don't have any preconceived notions or an agenda to like convert people or like, I just feel it so strongly that that's just who I am. It's who I am. Right? Mm -hmm. You're the same way with your spiritual enlightening and, and the way that you feel connected with people and earth and, and the higher powers, whatever that means. Whatever we want to whatever call it. Whatever it is. Yeah, it's all the same. But you talk. When you talk, you do. You talk about those things. And yeah. I never feel like, oh, she's trying to like change me or make me feel like I'm wrong. And that That's only, good. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, as long as you don't feel that way. But when I talk about things, like I've yeah. never felt that way because I'm just like, hey, she has found a purpose. Yeah. And I found a purpose. Can they coexist? Yes. We don't need to learn to agree like perfectly with one another. We need to learn how to disagree better in a way that it's like, you know what? We don't perfectly align up, but that would be really boring and lame if everyone just agreed with each other. Totally. Man. Totally, right? yeah. Everyone said, yeah, yeah, I get it, yeah, yeah. No. What has made me better? And the friends, honestly, the relationships that I love the best are the ones that challenge me and have different opinions than me. Yeah. Because I'm just like. That's good. I'm like, wow. I need more of that. That's a different way of thinking about it. And you know what? We can still be friends and disagree. Right? Totally. Because it, 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 it act, honestly makes me look outside of myself again. Yeah. Because when I think that like, oh, I figured it out and the way that I live and what I believe, everyone needs to do that. That is what's wrong with the world. Is that we want everyone to just think the same and do the same to make. Why? To make us feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Un being uncomfortable is the only way we're going to grow. And in my life, that has been a pattern of when I feel I'm being uncomfortable, I feel like almost like I feel more comfortable feeling uncomfortable. Because Great. I, That's, because I know wow. I'm being challenged and I know that I'm like, there's something fighting, like my inner is like, no, I want to be comfortable. Oh, so this isn't feeling good. Now I'm just going to go and lay in my bed and be depressed or not, you know, be social. So do you strive to be uncomfortable and then you're there until you're comfortable? I don't and think I ever really strive, but I know when I'm being uncomfortable that that's a better place and just thinking, man, life is just going so well right now. And just, it's, ah, it's just so nice. Puppies and ice cream all around, right? Is that what you're thinking when you're uncomfortable? I'm, I'm thinking like when my life is feeling like it's easy, uh -huh. that something isn't right. <laughs> okay, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I'm not, like, basically I'm just saying the only way you. that I feel like I'm progressing and growing is if there's something uncomfortable. Totally, 100%. Like if it's a relationship with a coworker. Like I'm going through right now with one of my business partners, and we're totally like brothers, and I know we're, it's, everything's going to be great, but there's been some resentment over the years and some issues that we need to figure out, and you know, either we put a Band-Aid on it or we just sit down and we talk, and we're going to sit down and we're just going to talk and let everything out, and we're not going to take it personally because I know nothing he says is going to have malice or hate behind it. It's going to be in the, in the tune of like, brotherly love and let's just figure this out mm -hmm. because what we're doing and our purpose together in music is way more important than who's right right yes, yes. so we spend so much time on trying to prove ourselves that we're, our opinion is right but at the end of the day it's not who's right it's what's right and so i know by talking we're going to land on what is right within our relationship moving forward and I'm not going to let my ego get in the way. He's not going to let his ego get in the way. And it's going to be awesome. But it's uncomfortable. It, it's going to be uncomfortable. 100%. It is. 100%. But I'm ready for That's it. That's where the growth is. Right. Yeah. So I thrive off that kind of stuff I do. Well, a couple more questions and then we'll wrap up. Yeah. Um, change the topic a little. What, what does it mean to be a father to you? 
Hmm. I hope my fortune cookie wants. Analogy time? Yeah. Okay, let's go. And it's actually, it was so powerful on what the fortune cookie said that I taped it to my speaker in another studio that I work in. And this is what it said. Don't worry about the stock market. Invest in family. This is what the fortune cookie said? Yeah. That's a great fortune right. cookie. Whoa, I got truth bumps yeah. everywhere. I love it. Right, and I'm getting them too now just yeah. thinking about yeah. it because, I, I mean, how profound is that? I mean, you can, there's so much in life that you can look at that and like, wow. Yeah. And so that, that was actually a, a point. There's many turning points in my life. I don't think there was this one day I woke up and, whoo, I think there's this little things that happened. And that was one of them where I was just like, yeah, I'm putting a lot into things that really in the eternal perspective of things doesn't matter, don't matter. Yeah. Like my family is where I need to invest in in my kids and in my wife. And like I said, there's there's nothing outside of, like at the end of the day, we're standing for the great judgment bar. I think the question that will be asked is more of what I did within the walls of my own home than what I did outside in the world. I think he's gonna ask me, how did I treat my wife? How did I treat my kids? Yeah, nothing else. Yeah, and that's a, it's a big responsibility and it can be overwhelming at times, but there is nothing more fulfilling or no greater source of joy to me than being a father. Nothing, nothing can compare to that. <sighs> it's honestly... If I was to imagine heaven and what it would look like and feel like, it's being surrounded with my wife and my kids, the people that I love. And nothing else matters at the end of the day because they're always there. And I believe, I have a firm belief that I will always be with them in this life and after this life. And when I think about that, and if I, when I have sometimes a thought of like if ever to be separated from them, like after I died, and I would never see them again, and never be with them, I would think that God would be the cruelest God ever. And so that's what kind of keeps me going, you know, keeps me... Mm -hmm. To want to just be better and the best that I can. Yeah, I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not going to figure it out in this life. But because of the belief, knowing that I have a life after this to continue those relationships and to grow and to keep progressing with them, to me, that is just awesome. And that's a loving God. You know, that's the kind of thing that I can get mm -hmm. behind. I'm like, yeah, thank you. Right? So, being a dad is awesome. Being a father, being a husband, that's really where it's at. If, if, if there was any purpose that I would say would be a purpose, I think that would be my, my top of my list. But it's the one that I'm, I'm, I feel like I need the most improvement. <laughs> is that? Okay. <laughs> uh, I get it. Yeah. I think you sold kids for me. Oh man, Paige is gonna be happy. Oh, oh you, you'll, 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 you'll. I mean, just think about the love you have for your pets. <sighs> That's what keeps me going. Oh my gosh! So times that by a hundred. <laughs> That's what thousand. everybody says. No, I'm, I'm telling Kelsey. I believe you. I believe you. It's the best way to learn patience. It's the best one to learn selflessness, because, you know what kids provide? You getting out of yourself. And as we know, that's the key. That's kind of been a topic theme, right? That's kind of interwoven through our conversation. It's yeah. like 
getting out of yourself. And so here you have an opportunity when you're given a child to get out of yourself. Get out of your way. And all of a sudden it's not like, oh, sitting around and having these selfish, what are we going to do today? Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? You know, like I, it's just like everything is about what are we going to do for this thing, this baby? What, you know, what do we need to do? What, 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 you know, we need to be better. We need to uh, um, grow and, 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 and figure out how to give this kid the best opportunity in the, in the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, your perspective just naturally switches right? in a powerful way. In a powerful way. The most powerful way. Nothing more powerful. Yeah. But it's such a natural way. Like there's. It feels so good. Right. Mm. It does, and and you just, I look at my kids sometimes. And you just want to cry, like happy tears, right? Just because when you see them start to figure out their purpose on their own. Yeah, you give them some direction. Of course, that's what we do as parents. And that's finding that balance of like helicoptering parents, you know, too much. And, but then also <laughs> stepping back and it's hard to like let them I make bet. certain decisions. But you're like, you know what? You're going to grow. And you're gonna. It, I'm gonna have to watch you go through hard things because it's the only way you're gonna figure it out. Yeah. I can't save you from all that. I want to. I want to save you from all that. I would love to, but that's not the part. That's not the plan of life. Right. But yeah, being a parent, raising children. I don't think there was any any better way to learn and grow and and. Discover your purpose then through unselfishly serving your children and mm. your family. Mm. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. But you're going to be so awesome. Wow. Seriously, you and Paige. <laughs> you got this. And you, but you got so many, not saying you have perfect examples, but you have a lot of resources yes, you know, in we your do. family. We need lots of support. To lean on. You yes. know what I mean? And I so feel that. You. I think it's just with like music, like, you know, my greatest influence was Michael Jackson and Prince, yes. right? But I think if you were to listen to my music, you wouldn't say I sound like Michael Jackson or Prince. But I took sounds and musical ideas or just the whole feel of things of what I loved about them, and then I found myself in music, right? So you look around your life and, and things that you see the way that people parent and your own mom, how she raised you and your dad. Some of you are like, oh, I love that. Some of you are like, eh, I'm going to do it different. Yeah. But then you just kind of get into your groove. And then Paige was bringing something totally different too to the table because Ooh, she was opposite. raised differently. Mm -hmm. But that is what's great about it. Yeah. Me and Rachel parent different. But because of the difference is what I think is giving, building that character in our kids is because we are different and they see how we handle life differently and they see my strengths over her, Rachel's strengths in the way that we discipline. I mean, at the end of the day, we have the same goal. Yeah. We go about it a little bit different, but variety is great. Yep. And our kids are going to grow up and, and see things with two different perspectives, but how they work together. But you guys are going to be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. When are you going to do it? <laughs> well, the plan is to start whatever process we're going to decide to start um, in January. That's the plan. I'm not all in on the plan yet. Paige is, but I'm going to at least commit to experiencing the process because I think it's going to be sort of, you know, it's long, you know. Yeah. So we'll start it and see how that feels. That's exciting. Yeah, January. We shall see. That's really exciting. Thank you. I'm, gonna, I'm glad that we're so close that in proximity. Yes that uh, we get to kind of see that unfold. I know, you. this is a great place to <laughs> raise a family. And I know you would agree with that. Way well, better than I've I been all over the world. And there's something about this Utah and these mountains and yes. just, it just, it's, it's my home, even though I was born in New Zealand, to a Dutch father and a Samoan mother. Utah is just, I found to be the place where I need to be right now. So I'm glad that you guys have <sighs> made the move. Kind of felt that it's we were just following the feelings. Right. This just felt right and we listened. 
I could do a whole interview with you asking you questions. Oh, yeah? yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> I don't have much practice with that. That would be good for me. I would be uncomfortable. I would grow. Uh, OK, so I have just wrapping up, but I just want to open it up to you. If you have anything to share, you feel called to share, you want to ask me a question before we ask my final questions. You know, I feel like, because um, just because I don't have this opportunity a lot, you know, with you yeah. specifically. I just want to tell you that I love you. <laughs> love you too. No, I really do. Um, oh man. You are uh, an amazing person. <laughs> you really are. And uh, your life hasn't been easy. You've had to do some very difficult things and figure out so many things that a lot of the world hasn't had to figure out and emotions that they've had to deal with with who they are. And as I've looked at you and the way that you've handled it and the person that you're becoming, I admire that and I respect it. And as your uncle, I'm really proud of you. And I truly want you to know how much I love you. And if there's ever been anything that I've made you feel that I haven't loved or cared or understood, I apologize and I hope you'll forgive me. It's been my own weakness and it's never been my, an intention of mine to make you feel unworthy of my love or, or whatever. Um, but I, I really want us, uh, hopefully this is kind of a beginning of a, a more closer relationship to where we can just, I don't know, just be, be each other, yeah. be, be ourselves and yes. feel, be comfortable with that. Um, because at the end of the day, we're family and nothing's more important than that. And so th this is an opportunity for me to this, I really want to take it and just tell you how much I love you. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. You're awesome. You You're really awesome are. too. Thank you. And I love Paige too. And I'll tell her separately. And in, in some time. She, she'll watch this on repeat. Let me tell you. <laughs> but anyways, there you go. That was. Thank you. That's, that was all, that's all I really wanted to say. Very sweet. And I love that sweet. we got to sit down and, and do this. Yeah, I, I pretty cool. It. I needed it. Oh, so Good. sweet. I needed it too. I, this motto keeps coming to my mind. Um, whatever you need, the universe will provide. So <laughs> this is like perfect timing for me. <laughs> but I love you too, Uncle. Thanks. <laughs> I hate crying, but here we are. It's okay. I it's don't good. hate crying. It's just uncomfortable. It is. But I always feel better after I have a good cry. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. Yeah, yeah, because letting go of whatever the freak. Yeah. Okay. So let what me, does... Let me get you a tissue. Thank you so much. I, need I meant to leave them right here because I knew this was going to happen. Thank you so much. Um, good. We're still recording. That's good. Okay, final question. The podcast is called Sacred Pause. So what does a sacred pause mean to you? I think a sacred pause to me means eliminating distractions on a daily basis yes. and taking time to appreciate and have gratitude for all the simple things in life. We get caught up in so many things and there's so many distractions. Pick up your phone, pick up your laptop. You have access to the world, anything you want. And I, I'm guilty of it where I just get sucked into it. You know, you, even if it's work related stuff and I'm doing emails or what, but you just get hours go, can go by. And so I think it's just important every day, and it doesn't have to be long. It can be five minutes. It could be less. It could be when you're driving to where you take a moment and turn down the noise. Sometimes I just, most of the time when I'm in my car, I don't have music playing because that's my time to have those moments of sacred pause <laughs> to where I can communicate with God 
I pray a lot driving. I don't, a lot of times it's hard for me to just like get on my knees and make it like a formal like ritual. Like I really feel like I can communicate with God whenever, with my eyes open when yeah. I'm driving. And so I take those moments to really just turn everything down, declutter, let go of all those things that are distracting me and have a moment to just listen. And those come in the forms of feelings and thoughts and ideas that otherwise I wouldn't be able to hear because I'm being distracted or thinking about things that are just, that are important, but that are blocking me from, I guess, inspiration of things that are important. So um, to, to me, it's uh, every day, honestly, I, I consciously think this is my time or I need to make time to just pause. Mm -hmm. And it's always led me to being more unselfish and doing things that are not about me. So really that's what it means to me. I love that so much. <clears throat> let go of those distractions and and just listen. Yes. Mm. Anybody who wants to follow you, catch up with you, maybe connect with you, where would we um, send them? You know, the best place to go, just um, to our website, um, thepianoguys.com, or go to YouTube, type in The Piano Guys, and we have like 80 videos now, and um, Spotify. So I think there's a little bit of music for everyone, yeah. you know, people who appreciate classical music, people who appreciate pop music. We, I think we've kind of found a great balance, and you know, the biggest compliments we get of our music is that people... Um, have said that our music helps them to, I guess, have those moments of pause mm. and to be able to, I mean, a lot of people think background music is, is not only your background music, but people will say, man, I made it through high school or college tests because I would play your music and it would help me focus. How cool is that? I did that in college as well. See? Yeah. yeah. Right? And because it's instrumental mm -hmm. music, it's just, it's easy to listen to and, you know, when you don't have to pay attention to the lyrics or whatever. And, and so I think that, um, yeah, go, go there and listen to it, give it a try. And if you like it, you like it. And if it, it can help you put a smile on your face, and I think that's make your day a little bit better. That's really our purpose behind our music. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's hug. Okay. Let's oh. see if I'm a better hugger now. Yes. The best part. <laughs> Love you. See, hugging feels good. I know. This is awesome. Thank That's you. Really I know. Awesome. I knew it was. Mm. I knew it would be. Ooh, yes. Money. Follow the feelings.